Hello, today as we're getting to the end of the year, I wanna talk about some brands that kinda of lost my interest in 2022. I picked out five brands that used to be top favorites for me. Brands that in 2021 and sometimes earlier than that, I was really focused on. I was keeping an eye out for their launches. I was buying a lot from them. I was always like looking to these brands with a lot of interest. But for some reason this year, whether it was their launches, whether it was their lack of launches, I haven't really kept up and I've kind of lost interest in. So I picked out five, but for fun, at the end, I wanted to throw in a bonus of a brand that I had the opposite experience with, that I gained interest in, a brand that I really feel like I did not care about for a few years that now I'm buying a lot from. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Brand number one probably started losing my interest prior to 2022, but this year it just fell right off. And truly, I don't know what's going on with this brand. I don't know how much longer they're even going to be a brand because it, I feel like they fizzled out. This brand used to be at Kohl's, they're not anymore. And I kind of initially attributed that to the new Sephora partnership, but now I just, I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen with this brand if they're just gonna slowly pull away because we didn't really see much from them this year. Do you know what brand I'm talking about? Have you guys guessed it? It's the Balm. And weirdly, like they're still posting on Instagram as of like a few days ago, a little bit here and there, um, but not that much. And weirdly, they don't have an Instagram bio. It just says the Balm Cosmetics, health slash beauty. It doesn't even say like you can buy it here. There's no link to their website. I don't know what's going on with the Balm, but like 2016, 2017, I was obsessed with that brand, you guys. The Mary Luminizer, obviously, their palettes. I was just always keeping an eye on them, what they were launching. I purchased a ton from them. And what's going on with the balm? Is, I don't know. I don't ever like to like speculate or guess like, oh, this is the next brand that's gonna go out of business. I don't want to like wish any negativity on any of these brands, but the balm is one I would not be surprised to see. Okay. That's sad. But the next one is Urban Decay. Urban Decay is a brand I think is probably doing fine regardless of whether or not I'm interested in them because Urban Decay will always be like a well-received brand in general. I think even though within the beauty community here on the internet, there's a loss of interest in Urban Decay, at the end of the day, they are one of those like staple brands that the average consumer loves. And like people see the name naked on a palette and they're interested in it just because of all of the history that Urban Decay has. But this year in particular, I have not been looking out for them. I So Urban Decay is one of those brands that the way their PR list works is they don't just send you everything. They will send out an email and ask if you want something and then you can opt in or not. This year, I don't think I've I don't think I've opted in for anything because there hasn't been anything that I was interested in. There were there really wasn't much that I thought, okay, my viewers might like to see a review on this. There was nothing. And even um when they launched the the mini naked palettes when they came out with a few color stories from that this year, I didn't even know that launched until I was mentioning them in a video a while ago and I was like wait did these launch and I'm looking into them I didn't even know what they were and I still like Urban Decay don't get me wrong the, I'm not saying I hate these brands Urban Decay in particular makes my favorite foundation the Naked Skin and then the one I'm wearing today the Hydromaniac I still think they make good products but I'm bored this next one kind of pains me because this was my one of my tip top favorite drugstore brands but again I've I've really lost a lot of interest in Koki. Koki, if you've been on my channel for a while, you probably remember years ago, I was such a Koki girl. Like I used and raved about so many of their products. I do have an affiliate code with Koki if you're ever shopping on their website. It is Kelly25, you can get 25% off. And I still think that they have good products, but I'm just waiting for them to launch something that gets me really excited. And I didn't see that this year. Even as someone that focuses so heavily on drugstore makeup here on this channel, 
I really wasn't trying much Koki this year. I, I don't even feel like they launched that much, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I don't think you need to launch a ton of makeup all the time. I actually prefer when brands don't, but there was nothing I saw from this brand that got me excited. I did like the like duo chrome, no, not duo chrome, that is not the word, ombre. The ombre blushes they did this year, I thought those were pretty. I, I don't know though, even looking over their Instagram account right now, most of the things that they're showcasing, these aren't new products, they're things they've had for a while. And they make good products. I just wanna see them come out with something cool and I didn't, I don't feel like I saw that in 2022. The next one, mm, it's Anastasia Beverly Hills. And don't get me wrong, they did launch some things this year that I think got a ton of buzz, but for me, when I think back to four or five years ago, actually even longer, six, seven years ago, Anastasia Beverly Hills was that girl. Like it was that brand that I wanted everything. I was so interested in anything that they launch and I just don't feel that way about the brand anymore. And I still use like my old Anastasia palettes. I'm still like regularly dipping into Soul Tree, even Modern Renaissance, even though mine is like that definitely expired. But in terms of new products, I'm just, they're not on the pulse of like new trends the way that they used to be. And I talked a bit about that in my uh, my Rise and Fall series when I did an Anastasia Beverly Hills episode, which I can leave linked down below. I also did one for Urban Decay, but I feel like by the time I see them coming out with something, it has already been trendy and we have a ton of other brands doing it. And then we see Anastasia Beverly Hills come out with that product. Whereas before it was really the opposite. And I also kind of lost interest in milk makeup. This is another one, maybe, if, again, with any of these brands, if they launch something in 2022 that you love and you are sitting here like, wait, Kelly, you need to try this, let me know. But there was nothing from Milk that drew me in to need to purchase it. Their concealer that came out this year, I was a little bit intrigued by, but I used to want everything from that brand. I used to be so intrigued, especially when their like cream stick products were first coming out. Like everything was so cool. I thought all the marketing surrounding the brand was very cool. But what did they even launch this year besides a concealer? Because I even, I'm on the Sephora website right now and I search their products backwards from newest and anything that's even showing me as new, it's like, oh, they came out with a jumbo size of the Hydro Grip. Which I mean, from their perspective, maybe that's, maybe that's great because the Hydro Grip being uh, where they have the primer and the setting spray with those type of products, that's something someone's gonna use up and they will always repurchase, so maybe that is just their stable product and they're really relying on that right now but there was nothing else this year that i was like oh yeah i've got to have that they also have a mattifying primer i'm seeing it's just like i guess the way i would describe it i'm seeing so many versions of the hydra grip because they've they've done it all they have the setting spray they have the primer they have the eyeshadow primer which is terrible they have different versions of it and it reminds me of it's like I would best describe it as the pillow talk effect or the NARS orgasm effect or the Urban Decay naked effect. Like any of these brands, they have that one staple product and then they just cannot seem to drop that name. Like everything is gonna be the Hydro Grip. Like I'm sure next year they're gonna come out with like a cream eyeshadow and call it like the Hydro Grip cream eyeshadow that won't move. Like when something becomes successful for a brand, they just run with it. And from a marketing perspective, I absolutely, I get it because like we said earlier in the video, when people see the name Naked on something, they associate it with the viral Naked palettes from decades ago. Like there's so much behind that name. And so with Milk and these other brands, it's not that I think they're doing poorly because I'm sure Milk is doing great and selling plenty of makeup. But as someone, wow, we just got so bright, but as someone, here in the internet beauty space that probably thinks about makeup and analyzes makeup way more than I ever need to just simply because of what I do. I am personally bored with milk, but I'm sure the general population is not bored with milk. But let's talk about a brand that had the opposite effect for me. 
here, hold on, this light. Okay, fix the lighting there, I think. But the brand that had the opposite route was Tarte. A few years ago, I did not care whatsoever about Tarte, but this past year, I have purchased a lot from the brand. Sitting right in front of me from another video I filmed today is the Powder Gem Foundation, super underrated. The Tarte Cream Bronzer I bought this year, obsessed. The Juicy Lip Pens, they're not my favorite ever and the packaging breaks for me, but I was intrigued by them. I've, I have multiple foundations from Tarte now and they, once again, are a brand that I'm looking out for and it has been a good like three or four years since I have said any words like that. Like, oh, I'm, I'm watching for Tarte. I'm intrigued by Tarte and what they're launching. And I think a lot of it actually has less to do with the brand themselves and more to do with the way makeup trends and even my own preference with makeup has shifted. And it is now more aligned with what Tarte does because Tarte makes simple products not super colorful, but they do look natural. They're dewy, they're balmy. So it makes sense that I'm more focused on Tarte. Other shoppers are too. But let me know down below the brands that you lost interest in this year and the brands that you gained interest in this year. I think this is a fun topic. Thank you guys so much for watching today and I will see you tomorrow for the next video of Vlogmas. Bye.